everybody. I hope you're not as disorientated I have been today. I tried to do last minute Christmas shopping. I don't know about any of you, but I left everything everywhere. I'm like, ma'am, ma'am, is this your bag? Of course it's my bag. Ma'am, ma'am, is this your cell phone? Of course it's my cell phone. And then I felt so bad. I was, people were looking out for me and then I ran into a good friend and she's like, I lost my cell phone. I had all my credit cards in. And I was like, oh. you're kidding me. I said, well, do you have that find your cell phone? She said, yeah. And I, she, but I don't know how to use it. And I felt like, you know, I felt so bad for her because that's like me. Like, I'm always like, I tell my husband, I've lost without him. Like, I'd have to rent a husband if he ever tried to leave me. Um, anyway, uh, so I tried to help her find her cell phone because I feel like we're all kind of running around. Mm -hmm. Well, some of us, because there's nowhere to go. I mean, for the island, we, all we did is we shopped and we went down the street, went to the local little store. And it was so nice because I felt like we were investing all our money on the island. And that's kind of how it should be. But we're doing it a night early, so in case you're going, wait, what are they doing live? Is today Thursday? Man, this yeah, week's gone. Thursday, yeah. Well, oh my gosh, see? I thought we were going to do <laughs> I thought we were going to do it a day early. Just goes to show you how nuts I really am. Anyway, so we got a great message for you. But without any further ado, you've ever heard that saying, great things come in small packages, right? Right. Come on. Yep. Come on now, let me hear some. Give me some loving. Hey. Great things come in small packages. Well, that's what my husband's going to share about today. That's what we're going to talk about. You know, as, as Christmas is almost here, uh, kids everywhere, they're waiting anxiously for the moment that they get to open their gifts, you know, ripping the wrapping and looking inside mm. the boxes. Yeah, it's kind of crazy this year. but It is. And uh, looking inside the boxes, hoping that, you know, there's some kind of cool surprise for them, right? Mm -hmm. Some boxes, they're going to be huge, you know? You know how you got to get the kids. And I hate when ones. they make them really big and then they put in something really small and, and you got to open small. up seven yep. boxes. And then some are mid-sized and then some are going to be very small. And those are great little packages. Adults, they're also going to be handing out gifts to their loved ones. Uh, they too might get uh, large or medium uh, or small packages, but small packages can hold great things. Yes, I would like diamond earrings or yes, a diamond necklace. Yes. How about you ladies? Anybody, can I hear an amen? Yes. Gosh, how, how and, scary. And even now, and today, you know, it's like today for someone out there or some people out there, they may ha uh, have inside a ring inside this little box that will have a question tied to it. Like, will you marry me? That's a special little box. Right? That's a special box. That uh, that'd be a special. That would be awesome. Holiday. And then moms um, may have may receive a small little box that has a ring with different colored uh, stones, each one representing the birthday of her children. Uh, their children, right? Yeah, those are mother That's rings. That's another those small, nice. great little gift. Uh, other boxes, small boxes may have. How about earrings. keys to a new Audi? That, yeah, would, that would be really that nice. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Earrings, necklaces, money, cards, keys to the cars, uh, all that. So we're gonna take a look at. A, an amazing gift that came in a small package. Mm -hmm. In Luke chapter 1, verse 30, it says, Then the angel said to her, "Do not speaking to Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Mm -hmm. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and you will bring forth a son, and he shall be called Jesus. And he will be great, and he will be called the Son mm -hmm. of the Highest. And the Lord of God, the Lord God, will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. So this was a promise that was given mm -hmm. to Mary. And this angel shows up and says, you're going to have this incredible small gift that's, mm -hmm. that's going to show up. I remember right when I found out I was pregnant for the first time, I felt like I won a lottery. Yeah, like a million dollars. I can imagine. Like it's, yeah. you just feel, it's such a miracle. It's such a beautiful sensation. And hers was even crazier because she hadn't even been with a man. Right. And they were going to say, you're going to have this special anointing on this child. We're going to, this baby's going to be conceived by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's mind boggling. That is. That is. And so Mary carried someone that was great in this small package. And mm -hmm. then right after that, she went to go visit her cousin who was pregnant at an old age. Uh, her name was it Elizabeth. It wasn't old. It was just older, hon. Oh, well, she was. Watch, watch. She was you. up there. <laughs> so anyways, afterward, Mary arose and hurried to the hill country of Judea to the village where Zechariah and Elizabeth lived. And arriving at their home, uh, Mary entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. And at the moment she heard Mary's voice, the baby within Elizabeth's womb jumped and kicked. Mm -hmm. And suddenly Elizabeth was filled to overflowing with the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. And then with a loud voice, she prophesied with power. She said, Mary, you are a woman given the highest favor and privilege above all others. Mm -hmm. For your child is destined to bring God great delight. Mm -hmm. How did I deserve such a remarkable honor to have the mother of my Lord come and visit me? The mother of my Lord come and visit me. So her baby inside, which was John 
um, the Baptist, Baptist, leapt inside because he recognized Mm -hmm. that there was this incredible visitation that had just come into the house. I love it. And the moment you came in, uh, she says, the moment you came into the door and greeted me, my baby danced inside me with ecstatic joy. Mm -hmm. And so we see another incredible thing that was happening there. There was this little baby inside Elizabeth who recognizes Jesus inside Mary and leaps for joy. Mm -hmm. And mom gets filled with the Holy Spirit and then prophesies this beautiful thing. And so it's like small packages Mm -hmm. have great things many times. And so the small unborn child, Elizabeth's baby, recognized Mary's baby, who was Jesus. And then later on, uh, Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, um, after the, the baby was born, after John the Baptist was born, it says in Luke uh, 167, it says, Then his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and gave this prophecy. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited and redeemed his people. He has sent us a mighty Savior from the royal line of his servant David, mm. just as he promised through his holy prophets long ago. So he visited us. Mm. And I think that was, that's the key that I wanted to talk about. You know, is that the fact that God would actually come and, and he would decide to do it as coming as a very vulnerable, very needy, uh, potentially his life to be so complicated as a baby. Yeah. Like, wouldn't it have been nice if he just kind of beamed himself down already mm-hmm. 30? But um, I think it was, it was to reveal what real humanity is. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we realize that he was deity, but we also realize that he was showing what redeemed humanity looks like. Right. Absolutely. So uh, small, there's so many ways that small can be great examples. Like... Like faith, you know, when uh, they asked Jesus about faith, you know, they, um, the apostles that were following Jesus, they, they said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. Mm-hmm. And the Lord answered, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, that thing is like so tiny, you could say to this mulberry tree, may you be uprooted and thrown into the sea and it would obey you. Right? So he's saying, really we can start out with small faith, right. as small as a, as a little mustard seed. Mm-hmm. And that alone would be able to uproot a mulberry tree mm-hmm. and toss it in the sea. It would obey mm-hmm. you. That's a whole bunch of power going on mm-hmm. with a, within a small thing like that. How can small faith do great things? Well, it's based on the promise that Jesus said uh, in John 14. He said, I tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. And so we see there that... That because of Jesus and through Jesus, we're going to be able to do these kinds of things. And that little mustard seed of faith we can use right. will be used to do great things. Mm-hmm. So small things can do great things. Absolutely. Unleash them. Absolutely. That's right. And, and small offerings too. Small offerings, exactly. Um, you know, Jesus saw that there was a huge crowd of people in John 6. They were coming and looking for him. And turning to Philip, he says, where can we buy bread to feed all these this people? This is my favorite story. And he was testing Philip, the, you know, it says, for he always knew what he was going to do. And Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed all these people. Then Andrew, his Simon Peter's brother, spoke, wait a minute, there's a young boy that's got five barley loaves and two fish. I can imagine how sarcastic it came out. Mm-hmm. But what good is that going to be for a huge crowd? And what does Jesus say? Tell everyone to sit down on the grassy slops. But you know what? I'll tell you something. I love, I used to, when I was young, I used to read the book to my kids. It was called Five Fish and Two Loaves. And it was the story of the mom that prepared that lunch for that little boy. And the little boy said, I want to go see Jesus. And the mom was like, okay, but it's a long way from here. And I want to make sure you have food so you don't get hungry on your way home. And I just can't imagine. And then the book talks about when the little boy comes home. He says, mom, you're never going to believe it. Jesus took my five loaves and two, you know, Mm. fish and and fed all the thousands of people who were there. And I can then mommy, it's okay, honey, just sit down. Like, you know, just not even believing what her son would say. And again, that small little boy had a great message to share to his mm-hmm. mom that day. So mm-hmm. I love this story. Yeah. And just to think that just a couple of, a, couple, a few loaves and some fish could feed multiple. Yeah, but it was the offering. It was that that little boy, he was given it. His mom gave her what she could so that he would be safe. And he gave the disciples what he could to help Jesus to feed all those people. That's right. And it was really the little boy's great faith that I was almost like, hey, I got fish and bread. And the disciples were kind of like, yeah, right. Anyway. Right. So yeah. you have a small package. Go ahead. That's yeah. good. And so I think that's the beautiful thing is whatever you offer to the Lord, yes. whatever you give to him, yes. uh, he can do great things with it. 
And another thing too is that we have this small package within us, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Jesus at the end, he says, once he was eating with them, he commanded them, he says, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, mm-hmm. but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So all of a mm-hmm. sudden, you know, this incredible God who created everything, it was going to come mm-hmm. in spirit, right? Mm-hmm. And would go come inside each one of us, you mm-hmm. know? Like how can a small package like us in, uh, hold such such a great thing, such as the Spirit of God, right? And so, which reminds me of the, the series that we've been doing, m- moving in. Uh, the, the scripture says, and the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. That's how, mm-hmm. you know, he, he became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. He moved into our lives. He moves into all that we are about and he makes a difference there. And so all he's asking of us is just to open our hearts, just to open our hearts and receive those things that we have. And so as we celebrate the greatest gift that came in the form of a baby, let us remember that great things come in small packages. Mm. And I think that is the most important message. It's like, you know, sometimes we just wonder, what can I do? Can I do great big things for God? It's like, he's just saying, just do the small things. And you know what? One of my favorite gifts that we take for granted, um, can I share that now? Sure. About um, that God has given us the gift of choice. We open that gift all day long. Mm-hmm. Am I going to be kind with my words? Am I going to forgive this offense right now? Am I going to put on a good attitude? Am I going to smile at this neighbor? Am I going to smile at my friend? Every little choice you make has been given to you as a gift. Mm. It's because God so loved you that he didn't turn you into a robot. He turned right. you into a, a, a human being that could respond to his great love and to be in relationship with that great love. And every choice you make determines the extent and the uh, quality of your life. And the intensity of the love that you have for those around you and the intensity and the beautiful relationship you have with the Lord. So I, you know, I remember once speaking at a woman's um, Christmas banquet and I wrapped it up really pretty and I said, this is one of the smallest, but yes, most powerful gift you will ever have. And that is choice. So, you know, this Christmas, we have a lot of choices to make. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Some of us are really going through some hard times. We've lost a loved one. We have loved ones that are in the hospital. We desperately want to see our families, but we can't because we're afraid that we might bring them COVID and we don't want that hanging over our heads. And the kids, they don't understand. They're like, what do you mean we're staying home? What do you mean we're not going to see family? I think, you know, every, in California, our cases are just, you know, I'm sure for those of you that keep up with the news and stuff, we're just... We're just in the middle of a huge surge. And those of my friends that work in the hospital and uh, providers, it's just, it's a really scary time. So sometimes we really have to keep our focus. Um, We have to make a choice. What are we going to remember? God is mighty. And though this problem may seem big, he is so much bigger. Mm -hmm. So again, knowing that he is in control, even when things don't seem like they're in control. So I just want to encourage you, especially those of you that are really struggling right now, we know that several families on the island are just going through a really hard time and our dear friend's daughter's just fighting for her life. So it's just, these are hard times. That's right. But guess what? God has come to overcome the world. Mm-hmm. The victory that he brings us isn't just the victories here. It's victories forevermore. Mm-hmm. And we've been prepared for eternity and a better place. So we have to hold on to that. We have to live victoriously. Um, and I think when we remember that the Holy Spirit is mighty within, it's as great as he that is in you than he that is in the world. So even though it's a small fire in our hearts, we just need to remember that we can rise above it. We can be overcomers. We can be victorious. And so um, I want to encourage you with that. Mm, that's good, huh? So is, uh, that's good. Yeah. So with that, we just want to wish all of you mm-hmm. a, a blessed and Merry Christmas mm-hmm. and be safe uh, for the, especially during the season. Um, and, I, and I just uh, want to encourage you just to Call someone, hug someone, hold someone. Yeah, Zoom people. Don't forget to Zoom. Zoom really works. At least you get to see their faces and stuff. That's right. And I just want to say that, um, you know, we know that a lot of you probably may not even get to see this week. I know for Thanksgiving week it was, you know, we're all busy and it's Christmas Eve. You should be with your family. But if you do pull this video up when you have the time, our prayer is that it really encourages you. Um, Mm -hmm. But I promised a friend of mine, Cheryl Chambers, that I would play a song for her that she'd been wanting me to play. So we're going to end with that song. Okay, and so I'm just going to have you focus at this wall because I'm going to step up. 
and Merry Christmas as she's going to play a song for you.